Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rachel from Evelyn and Peter and today I have a crochet hooded cowl for you guys. So I'm just gonna get right into it and let you guys know everything that you need for this pattern. So this is what it looks like. So I made this by working granny stripes here in the round and then you will split off and work granny stripe rows up at the top for the hooded portion and then you add a quick trim here along the opening of the hood and add a cute little drawstring with pom-poms through that as well. So it's pretty easy to do um, if you are a beginner. You can get a hang of this pretty quickly and if you have experience with granny stripes or granny squares then it should be no problem for you guys um, in the tutorial I'm making this cute little tiny version of it because I made this one without recording and then decided I would just throw together a quick tutorial for you guys I do go over everything that you need to know that's in the pattern. So I'll show you all the important parts. I'll show you how to do everything. Basically, I've just shrunk it down so it's super tiny compared to what yours looks like. Um, but I still will make sure that I show you guys everything that you need to know. It's just this cute little tiny miniature version that I'm working on. So don't be thrown off by that. Um, if you notice that mine's a lot smaller than yours, that is how it's supposed to look. Um, yours will be looking very large like this one so I will show you guys how to um, do this whole portion here we have a couple decrease rows that are up at the bottom of the hood part right here so just be aware of that um, there's two decrease rows that you you will need to do and in my little mini version here I show you how to do one of those decreases but I don't show every single decrease I'll let you know that there is more but I definitely recommend following along with the written pattern because um, that'll tell you exactly how many decreases you have and where they should be um, because for mine I just show it one time instead of showing it over and over again because mine is a tiny version um, so yeah I definitely recommend getting onto my blog the pattern is free on there and you can follow along with the written version I have all of the stitch counts listed there I have everything you need to know with links to everything all the different materials that I use um, the exact yardage and the colors that I'm using um, I also have links to the line brand yarn kit this is available as a kit and the kit comes with the digital download of the pattern so that you can print it out and then it also comes with all of the yarn that you need to make your hooded cowl you can also change the colors out on that if you want and make it um, more your style in terms of colors. So yeah, it's super fun to make. I used Basic Stitch Anti-Pilling Yarn by Lion Brand. It's really nice yarn, washes really well. Um, you need a five millimeter hook and a yarn needle to weave in your ends, scissors of course, and then if you wanna make the little optional pom-poms, um, you'll need a pom-pom maker or you can find a YouTube uh, tutorial for that as well there's a ton of them on YouTube so I think that is it for this pattern um, let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments and I hope that you like this tutorial and I will see you guys in the next one so to get started you are going to need some worsted weight yarn I'm using line brands basic stitch anti pilling and you're going to need it in three different colors if you are following along with the color changes like I am in the video and I'm just using ecru and russet and olive for my three colors and you need two of the olive and then one of the other colors and then you're also going to be using an H five millimeter crochet hook scissors and a yarn needle to weave in your end so we're going to be starting off with color A and that is the olive color and you can begin by making a slip knot so just wrap the yarn around your fingers and then grab that loop and pull it through and insert your hook so this is going to be the first row we're starting on the bottom and working our way up and so for round one we're going to be doing some foundation single crochet stitches so yarn over and pull through and then yarn over and pull through again and that's two chains and then in the first chain is where we are going to be inserting our hook for our first foundation single crochet so you can rotate your work just slightly and in that back bump is where you'll be putting your hook and then yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through the first loop only on your hook 
So you have two loops left on your hook, yarn over and pull through both loops that are on your hook. And that is one foundation single crochet stitch. So we're going to be repeating that same thing again. And we're going to be doing this next stitch on the bottom of the one that we just made. So insert your hook, make sure it's going under both of the loops. So you have three loops on your hook right now, and then yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one loop only, and then yarn over, pull through the final two, and that is a second foundation single crochet stitch. So again, on that stitch that we just did on the bottom is where you're gonna be putting your hook. So insert your hook, make sure it goes underneath both those loops, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. That is our third stitch made. You can see it's creating these little V's on the bottom of the stitches. That is basically, basically our chain. So this is, instead of working a chain and then row one of single crochets, we're just combining the starting chain and the first row together, and that is the foundation single crochet row. So you're gonna keep repeating this until you have the correct amount of stitches that it calls for in the pattern. So you can see here the stitches. This is our top of the single crochet stitch and then along the bottom is the chain. So in the written pattern, you're going to be working 99 foundation single crochet. And then again, I'm just making a small sample of this cowl. So mine's going to be a lot smaller and I am not doing as many stitches. So yours will obviously be a lot longer but just continue doing this for a total of 99 stitches. Okay, so now that we have row one complete, we're going to be joining the first and last stitch that we made together to form a loop so that we can start working in the round. So you want to take that first stitch that you made and bring it around. Make sure that your work is not twisted. So just make sure that everything is going the same direction and you have no twists in your work. And then in that very first foundation single crochet that you made is where you're going to be putting your hook. So you're just putting it underneath the top two loops and slip stitch to join. So just yarn over, pull through that stitch and pull through the loop on your hook. And so now our work is joined and we're going to be working in the round. And you can see there's a slight gap here, but don't worry about that. When we are weaving in our ends, you can sew that little gap together. So just be aware of that. So now we're going to be starting round two for our work. And for this round, we're gonna be going in the same direction. So you're not gonna turn yet, but after this, round is when we're gonna start turning. But for this one, keep going. So chain three, and then in that, in the chain three counts as a double crochet stitch. So from here and throughout the rest of the pattern, that first chain three is one double crochet. And then in that very same spot, work two more double crochet stitches. So you can see here, I have a chain three, and then in that very same spot that we um, slip stitched to join, so in that first single crochet still, I worked two more. So we have a total of three double crochet, and then you're gonna skip the next two single crochet stitches, and then work your hook into the next one, and then work three more double crochet stitches into the same spot. So there's my first one, and then in that very same stitch, just work two more. So you can see yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and just work three double crochet all into the same spot. And that's basically what we're going to be doing for the rest of this round. So again, skip two stitches from the round below, and then in that next stitch is where you're going to be working your double crochet. So we have one double crochet, and then work two more into that same spot. So just continue to do this all the way around and I will meet you guys back at the end of the round to show you how to join and start the next round. Okay, so now I've worked my way around and I'm back to the beginning of the round. So this is what your piece should look like, but just a whole lot bigger than what mine does. And we have two single crochet stitches left of this round, and we're just going to be skipping over them to finish off the round and slip stitching into the top of that chain three. So again, that chain three counts as our first double crochet. So you're just gonna insert your hook into the top of that chain three. 
Might be a little bit difficult to wiggle your hook in there and then just slip stitch to join, yarn over, pull through at the top of the chain three and pull through the loop that's on your hook as well. So now we have slip stitch to join that second row. You should also have a total of 99 double crochet stitches at the end of round two. And from here on out for this portion, so starting with round three, we're going to be turning our work. So go ahead and turn your work and now we're going to be working back in the direction we just came. And we're going to be starting to work in the spaces now in between those double crochet stitches. So this very first space that's right underneath where our hook is, is that is the first space where we will be working into for this portion of the cowl. So you wanna slip stitch into it. So just reach your hook underneath, slip stitch to join into the, that very first space and then chain three. And that counts as our first double crochet. And then in that same space that we just slip stitched into, you're gonna work two more double crochet. So that is our first set of three double crochet stitches and that's in that very first space. And then we're going to be skipping over the next three stitches. So you're not gonna be working into any of the double crochet stitches. You're just gonna skip right over them and work three more double crochet into the next space. And then just repeat that all the way around. So skip the three double crochet and then work three more double crochet into the following space until you get back to the beginning. Okay, so after you've worked your way around, you should have three double crochet stitches in each space all the way around, and there should be no empty spaces. And then you can see that we just have this one last set of three double crochet in between the beginning and the end of the round. So normally we would slip stitch to join into the top of the chain three, and we're still going to do that, but instead of doing it normally like this with our um, green color, we're actually going to drop that and we're going to bring in a new color. So from here on out, we're going to be switching our colors every two rows or rounds of the granny stripes. So we have two rounds of the olive color, and so we wanna drop that. So you can just pull out that last yarn over of the last double crochet. Instead of finishing that stitch with the green, you're gonna drop it and um, put the cream color on your hook and finish that stitch and pull through with the white. So. Now we are having our working yarn color be the cream color and that is color B and that's how we're going to finish off. So insert your hook again into that top of the chain three and now we're gonna slip stitch to join with the cream color. So you can go ahead and pull the cream color through and then you'll wanna tug down on those tails of yarn to just make it tight and secure in the back. So go ahead and go give those a tug. And now we're going to be working with the color B instead of color A. So turn your work, because we have to turn our work after every round. And you just wanna tuck the tails out of the way and just ignore them. And now you will be having your working yarn color be the cream color. So again, slip stitch into that very first space. So the space right below our um, where we're working is where you're gonna slip stitch into. And then chain three, and that counts as our first double crochet and then go ahead and work two more double crochet stitches into that same spot. You can also go ahead and cut the color A. Um, I played around a little bit with it to see if I could just bring those colors up as we go instead of cutting and joining, but you could see them poking through these spaces in the granny rows. So I found it best to just cut it and we'll weave those a few um, ends in when we are finished. So that's only for the bottom cowl part. After that, we can carry our yarns up the side. So for the rest of this row, just continue like you've been doing and work three double crochets stitches into every single space all the way around until you get back to the beginning. Okay, so now I've worked my way around and we are not going to be changing colors this time because remember it's only every two rows. So you can go ahead and slip stitch to join into that top of the chain three and then turn your work. And then again, in that very first space right below where we are working is where you're going to be doing your slip stitch. So insert your hook into that very first space, slip stitch in there, and then chain three. And then work two more double crochet stitches into the same spot. And then do the same thing that we've been doing and just repeat the three double crochet into every single space all the way around. 
Okay, so now I'm back to the beginning and now we're going to be doing another color change. So instead of inserting our hook with the cream color, you'll want to finish your last double crochet stitch of the round with the copper color. So you can put that on your hook and then just pull through your final double crochet stitch, tug those tails so that it's nice and secure, and then do that slip stitch with color C. So you can go ahead and insert your hook into the top of the chain three and then yarn over and pull through and then again tug on the tails make sure it's nice and tight. And now our working yarn is color C and this is what we'll be using for the next two rows. So insert your hook into the space below and slip stitch in there and then chain three and then work two more double crochet into that same space. And then once again, just repeat the row three, which is what we're going to be doing until we have a total of 19 rows. So just keep going with the three double crochet into each space all the way around. Okay, so once you reach the end of the round, you can go ahead and slip stitch to join to the top of the chain three. And then again, turn your work slip stitch into that space in between those two groups of double crochet. So in that very first space and then chain three, work two more double crochet. And then once again, you can just do the same thing. And so we're just gonna keep repeating this, which, which I have shown you guys for a total of 19 rounds. And since mine is a little miniature version, I'm not gonna show you every single round, but you need to do this for a total of 19 rounds and you'll continue to um, alternate between color A, B, and C every two rounds. So you need to keep going until you have 19 rounds and your stitch count will stay the same and you just need to make sure you switch your colors, but you'll just be repeating that same thing that I just showed you over and over and over again. So now this is as many as I'm gonna do for this example, and I'm going to show you guys how to now split off and start the hood portion. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and finish off the round 19 like we normally would by changing colors because we have two rows of our previous color already made. So you can place your new color on your hook and then pull it down tight. And then go ahead and slip stitch to join in the top of the chain three. And then we're going to turn our work as normal. And then again, slip stitch into the space directly below you. So once you have your new yarn color in, turn your work, slip stitch into that very first space below, and then chain three and work two more double crochet stitches into the same spot. And so this round is going to be the same as every other round and the only difference is going to be at the end of the round and I will show you guys how to do that. So work three double crochet into each space all the way around like normal. And then when you get to the end here, um, instead of joining to the top of the chain three, we're just going to turn our work. So this is gonna start the split or the opening of the hood for our face. So from now on and here on out we're no longer going to be joining and this is our um, a bottom center of the neckline these three unworked clusters and this is later where we're going to be um, adding in our yarn and joining for the trim but after you turn your work you're going to be starting off with row 21 and row 21 is a decrease row in the pattern so i'll show you guys how to do that so you're gonna start off with a chain three and this still counts as a double crochet. So this is still our first double crochet of the row. And then you're gonna skip over these first three double crochet stitches from the row below and work your first set of double crochet into that very first space. So you have your chain three and then you've skipped over those stitches and then work your three double crochet into that spot and then go ahead and do it in the next spot as well. And in the written pattern, it'll tell you how many um, spaces to work the double crochet into. So you're going to work into the first six spaces and work your 
three double crochet as normal into your very first six spaces but because mine is a lot smaller than yours I'm only going to show you how to do the decrease one time because if I did it the same amount of times as the written pattern it would not work out so I'm just going to show you how to do it one time and that's how you do it every single time it says in the written pattern to do a decrease so it's the exact same every time but you just want to make sure you pay attention to um, how many that you have worked into the spaces and then how many decreases you have. So for our decrease, you should have six sets of the double crochet into the first six spaces and then we're going to work a decrease. So the decreases are really simple. Instead of um, working into the next space like normal, we're gonna skip over it. So you wanna chain one to give us a little bit of extra length, skip over the next three double crochet as normal, and then you're also going to skip over the next space and the following three double crochet. So you're skipping over a total of six double crochet plus the space that's in between them. So. That is it for the decrease and this is what it looks like. And so when in the written pattern, when it calls for you to skip over the following, that's all you do and that is one decrease. So in the pattern, you will be doing a total of four decreases for this row, but I'm only showing you one, but just know that each time it calls for a decrease, it's the same exact thing. So you'll have work into this first six spaces, work a decrease, work into the next six spaces, work a decrease, work into the next four spaces, work a decrease, work into the next six spaces, work a decrease, and then work into the final six spaces. And that is what you should have for row 21. And you'll also have a total of 86 double crochet at the end of row 21, our first decrease row. So don't forget that the chain three also counts as a double crochet. So just keep going after you work that final decrease and you'll be working into the last six spaces. And then this is how you finish off the row. So you can see our um, set of double crochet from the row below. We have a chain three plus the two double crochet. And you want to work your final double crochet stitch into the top of our chain three. So in the very top of the chain three, just insert your hook and work one double crochet to finish off the row. And of course, we're switching colors, so you're going to have to bring in the next color. So instead of um, finishing that final stitch with the current color that you're on, you're going to bring in the next color and just lay it over your hook and yarn over and pull through with that new color to start us off using that color on the next row. So go ahead and just lay your new color on your hook and then pull through and finish that stitch with your new color. And then of course, give it a little tug on the back to secure. And I just wanted to show you guys really quick what the decreases look like. And we will be working our new row um, with those decreases from the row below. So we're going to be working directly into those spaces still. So just wanted to show you the gap is a little bit bigger as you can see here for the decrease, but it is totally unnoticeable once everything is said and done, but you will be working your stitches into this space as well. So make sure you don't skip over it. Okay, so this is row 22 in the written pattern. So go ahead and turn your work. And to start us off, you're going to chain three so this is our first double crochet. And then for our first three double crochet set, you're, you wanna make sure that you put it into the very first space. So you wanna make sure that you don't accidentally skip over this very first space. You wanna do it directly below, right next to where your chain three is. So, and this is for the rest of the pattern. Make sure you're not skipping that. So go ahead and insert your hook. And then you're gonna work three double crochet stitches into it. So we're gonna have our chain three plus the three double crochet. And the chain three we specifically want there and this is how it will be for all of the rest of the rows as well because we will be working our um, trim over this as well when we um, finish up the hood. So go ahead and continue around with three double crochet into each space all the way around until the other side. Thank you. 
Okay, and then when you reach the end of the row, you can see we have one more set of the three double crochet, plus we have one more space left. So you wanna make sure that you're not accidentally skipping our final space. It should match on both the beginning and the end of the row. It should look the same. So you wanna work those three double crochet into that space. And then we have to finish off with a double crochet as well because we have that starting chain three. So you wanna kinda of wiggle your work of three double crochet over because our final double crochet is gonna be into the top of the chain three. So that very top um, chain from that chain three might be kind of hidden a little bit by your double crochet, but you can just scoot it over a little bit and you can easily put your hook into that top of the chain three, work your final double crochet, and that is the end of row 22. So you should have a total of 89 double crochet for this row. So then you can go ahead and chain three and turn your work and now starting off this row, uh, we have the three double crochet right below. So we have our th chain three, which counts as our first double crochet. And then we have three double crochet from the row below, but we're gonna skip over it. And then in that very first space, work your three double crochet. So you're gonna work into it and then just skip over the stitches and work three more double crochet into the next space and just do this all the way around until you get to the other side. Okay, so now we're coming up on the end here. We have our three double crochet plus that chain three. So we're gonna finish off with one final double crochet into the top of the chain three. So basically these um, two rows that I just did are what you're going to be repeating for the rest of the pattern. So that was the end of row 23 and we have a total of 86 double crochet. And now we're gonna bring in our new color and we're gonna do another decrease row. So this will be the same as our first decrease row that we did, but we're going to be doing a different amount of decreases, obviously since the amount of um, double crochet sets have changed, but now we're gonna be doing the same thing. The decreases um, will be the same as I previously showed you as well. So this is starting row 24 in the written pattern, and you can chain three and turn your work. And now that you guys know how to do these rows and you're just doing the same thing over and over, so work those three double crochet into that first space. Make sure you don't accidentally skip it. And I will let you know here um, what the written row says for the actual decrease row because I won't be showing it to you again since I've already previously showed it to you. Um, and my sample is obviously really small and I don't have that many stitches. So I want to be able to have enough to show you the rest of the pattern and how to close it up. So I'm not going to be doing any decreases, but remember when you do a decrease, you just skip over three double crochet, the space and the next three double crochet. So you just skip over six double crochet total plus a space. When you do your decrease, don't forget to do that chain one as well. So you'll chain one and then you'll skip over all of that. So in the written pattern, you're going to be working three double crochet into the first five spaces, chain one and skip over the three double crochet, one space and three double crochet. And then you're gonna work three double crochet into the next five spaces, do another decrease, and then you're gonna repeat that two more times. So work three double crochet into the next five spaces again, do another decrease, and then work three double crochet into the next five spaces again and do one more decrease. And then you'll just finish off the row by working three double crochet into the final five spaces. So you'll be doing um, that for your next decrease row, which is um, row 24, the one we're currently on. So I'm just gonna work my way around as normal without any decreases, but make sure you do as I just said and you work in those decreases for yours. And then at the end of the row, you should have a total of 77 double crochet. And this will also be the final decrease row. So you only have a total of two decrease rows and after that you're just going to be doing a regular row and um, have a total of 45 rows. So again, finish off this row by working three double crochet into that last space plus your double crochet into the top of the chain three. Don't forget that final double crochet. So 
So now you should be starting row 25. So just chain three, which counts as our first double crochet. Skip those first three stitches and then work your three double crochet into the next space and work three double crochet into each space all the way across until you get to the other end of the row. Okay, so just finish the row by skipping over those last three double crochet and working your final double crochet into the top of the chain three. And then again, we have to switch colors. So we're gonna finish off our last stitch by bringing in our new color. And for this portion um, of the project, I left my yarn attached and I just carried it up alongside of the hood. So you could cut and join if you wanted to, but I found that just bringing the yarn up, making sure that you're not pulling it too tightly, you don't want anything to cinch up or anything like that, but just loosely carry it up along the side was a lot easier than cutting and joining because later on when we work our trim, we can just crochet directly over that strand of yarn and it will be covered. That way you have less ends to weave in. So I definitely recommend doing that at this point. And then you can just chain three with your new color and turn your work. So this starts off row 26. So you're gonna work three double crochet into the first space. Make sure you're not skipping that very first one on the edge. And then just the same as usual, you're going to skip over three stitches and work three double crochet into the next space and repeat it all the way across the row. So work three double crochet into each space all the way across. And when you get to the end of the row, you should have a total of 77 double crochet. And then after that, you can just repeat these last two rows until you have a total of 45 rows. So this, it, we're going to be doing finishing row 26 and then for rows 27 through 45, you just repeat rows 25 and 26 over and over and over again. So I'm obviously not gonna do all of those rows because mine is the smaller version, but you do want to have a total of 45 rows. So again, make sure you carry your yarn up with you as you change. Don't carry it all the way around, just carry it up the side of the hood. And so these last two rows that I just did with you are what you'll be repeating until you have the correct amount of rows. So do it for 45 rows and repeat those last two rows. There's no decreasing or anything like that. So just do your regular rows. And then after that, we just have to seam up the top and add the trim. So I'll show you how to do that as well. Okay, so once you have all the rows that you should have, you should have a total of 45 rows. And now we're just going to be closing the top of the hood. So you're going to be folding the hood in half and you wanna make sure that you are working your seam on the inside. So you can see that I've kind of um, folded it so that my seam will be on the inside of it. But if it's easier for you, you can turn your entire um, hooded cowl inside out. So turn it inside out so that the tails are on the outside as you do this, but you just wanna make sure that the side that you're on, you're seaming it so that it's hidden on the inside of the hood. So you wanna fold your piece in half so that everything is lined up and then chain one. And then you can insert your hook into that very edge double crochet. And then you're also going to be inserting your hook into the top of the chain three. So you wanna make sure that you are lining your stitches up and then you're just gonna slip stitch and pull through. So just yarn over, pull through both panels and through the loop on your hook. And then again, insert your hook into the next stitch on both sides, yarn over and pull through both and pull through the loop on your hook. Again, insert it into the third, yarn over and pull through. And the fourth, yarn over and pull through. So I didn't tie off my work on that last row. I just went directly into seaming if you prefer to use a needle, you can tie off your work and then just use a tail of yarn long enough and you can do your preferred seaming method or however you wanna sew it, as long as you, you just sew this last row together and just make sure that your stitches are lined up and that you're not accidentally skipping over any of them or putting two stitches into one. So just make sure everything is lined up and that this last row is now sewn together and then you can just go ahead and cut your yarn and then turn everything right side out again. 
Okay, so the main portion of our project is finished. We have our cowl and the hood complete. And now all we have left to do is add on the trim and the drawstrings if you are doing that. They can be totally optional, but I at least recommend um, working a trim at least one round around the opening to hide in those ends. And I definitely recommend doing the complete thing because I just think it looks super cute with the drawstring and the folded trim as well. So I'll show you guys how to do that. So you can go ahead and take color A and begin with the slip knot. And then we're just going to be joining to the bottom opening of our hood at that unworked set of three double crochet in the center. So make sure that your hooded cowl is right side out so that the seam is on the inside. And then you're just going to be inserting your hook into the top of that chain three. So on the very right stitch of that center unworked cluster right there at the top, you're gonna insert your hook and then just slip stitch to join. So after you have joined your yarn, you're just going to chain one. And then we're going to work one single crochet into that very same spot. So again, into the top of the chain three, put your hook and work one single crochet stitch. And then you're going to work one single crochet into the top of the next two stitches. So, so there's our second and there is our third single crochet. And now we're just going to keep going by working single crochet stitches up the first side of the hood. So for this part, you might um, be a little intimidated because you're not working into an actual stitch, but I promise it's super easy. You're going to actually be working into the sides of the rows. And for every single granny stripe row that you have, you'll be working two single crochet stitches into the side of each of the rows. So that's a really easy way to make sure that you are going at the right pace. You're gonna work one single crochet and I'm just doing it directly around the double crochet stitch. And then when you get to the rows that end with that chain three, you'll just work two single crochet directly around the chain as well. So it's super simple to do. So you can see here I'm doing my first and then my second. They're both around the chain and then we're coming up to one that ends with the double crochet. So just work two single crochet around the double crochet and you're just going to do this all the way up the first side of your hood and then I'll show you what to do when you get to the top of the hood at the seam area. So just keep going with two single crochet for every single row. Okay, and then when you get to the top of the hood and we are at the seam where we joined both sides together, you're just going to work one single crochet stitch into that seam. So you've worked two per row and then at the very center of the seam, just work one single crochet. And then you can just keep going, go down that second side of the hood by working two single crochet per every single row all the way down. And then I will show you guys what to do at the bottom. So just keep going as you did on the first side, working two stitches for every row. And also this is the side that you have the yarn that you've pulled up alongside when you change colors. So you can just crochet directly over those like I mentioned earlier in the video. So that yarn that you brought up along the side of the hood. Now you can just work your stitches directly over it so you don't have to do anything special but just make sure that it's laying on your hook like it is here as you work your single crochet. And you can just do that for all of the yarn that you need to work over. Okay, and then when you get to the bottom and you've worked your way all the way around the opening of the hood, that completes round one of our hood trim. And you're just going to be slip stitching into that very first single crochet that we made. So that single crochet that's in the top of the chain three, you're just gonna insert your hook into it and then just slip stitch to join. And that completes round one. Now you could leave it like this if you don't want the drawstring, but if you want the drawstring like it is in my photos, then you got, you're going to want to keep going. So you can chain one and turn your work. You should have a total of 108 single crochet, but it's also not super important if you notice that your stitch count is off a little bit. Um, and you accidentally have a couple more, a couple less stitches, that's totally fine. 
So once you've slip stitched to join on that first single crochet, just chain one, turn your work and work one single crochet in each stitch all the way back. And then I will show you guys what to do when we get to the end of the row. Okay, so now I'm coming up on my last couple of stitches of row one of the hood trim. And once you reach back down to the bottom, we have these three single crochet that are from round one are at the bottom neckline and you're going to leave those unworked. So you should have worked your way back across, but leave those three stitches unworked and then just chain one and turn, turn your work and work your way back across to the other side. And then you're going to chain one and turn and work your way back. And you're going to do this a total of four rows. So you'll have a total of five if you count the round one of the hood trim and then um, rows one through four of the actual trim where you're working back and forth in rows. And your stitch count for that should be 105 single crochet. So just make sure you leave those three stitches at the bottom unworked and that you just chain one and turn your work with each row. I'm only going to show you guys that one row since there's no reason for me to do the entire row, but just make sure you repeat that for a total of four rows. And then once you have that done, you can go ahead and cut your yarn and you'll wanna make sure that you leave your tail long enough to sew the little flap shut. So yours will be obviously wider than what mine is here and it'll look like a little flap and we're going to be folding that over on top of itself and sewing it together to create the tube for our drawstring. So you'll wanna leave about 24 inch tail or so to seam that shut. So you can go ahead and set aside your cowl here for a minute and we're going to make the drawstring. So for that, just go ahead and create a slip knot and insert your hook. And then we're going to be chaining a long length. So you wanna chain at least 201. So just yarn over and pull through a total of 201 times for our drawstring. I'm only going to do this tiny little miniature version just to show you how it is done. So I have 11 here. And then in the second chain from the hook, you're just going to slip stitch into it. So insert your hook and then yarn over, pull through and pull through the loop on your hook as well for one slip stitch and then do it in the next chain as well. And in the next one, and you're just going to do it all the way down the chain length. So you have 201 chains and then you're going to slip stitch in the second chain from the hook and all the way back down for a total of 200 slip stitch to create the drawstring. So here is what it should start looking like. And then once you have that, you can just go ahead and tie off at the bottom. And then I will show you guys how to place it and um, work it inside of the tube that we're gonna make with our little um, panel trim that we made. So you can go ahead and cut off, pull through. And then what you're gonna wanna do for the drawstring is place it on the little flap of the rows um, one through four of our trim. So technically five rows with that round one, but you're just gonna place it on there and then fold it over and work and sew it together with the drawstring in it. This way you don't have to take the drawstring and try and thread it through um, when you're done because that would be a lot more difficult unless you had the correct tool to do it But I just placed my drawstring on top of the flap and then folded the flap over And then you can take your needle and you're gonna put it on the outer stitch of that final row and then sew it through the first row that you made as well so just fold it over so it's gonna be folded over and you're gonna be doing the sewing on the outside of the hood so you just fold it on top of itself and make sure your drawstring is placed in there and you're just gonna work directly over the drawstring. Make sure that you don't accidentally stick your needle into the drawstring itself because then it'll get stuck and you won't be able to move it up. But you're just gonna lay it over the first couple of inches and then as you keep going and sewing, just pull it up with you as you go all the way around. So just tug it up every couple inches once you keep going and pull it out the other side. So you can use any um, sewing method that you prefer for this one and just make sure that everything is lined up correctly and that you just sew through the first row and the last row of the trim. 
And then you can also make a couple of pom-poms, which are optional, and tie those onto the bottom of the drawstring if you want. I use my pom-pom maker, but there's also tutorials available online that you can follow. And then once you have your drawstring made and everything sewn together, you just need to weave in your ends. So this is what the final product looks like. This is my um, normal version. Let me zoom out so you guys can see. So this is what the trim looks like once it's all folded over and sewn. So you can see that I've just folded it over, sewn it together. There's my drawstring with the pom-poms. I just sewed those on. And then I also um, worked those stitches right along the edges of that, the edge of the granny square. So you can see it's a nice clean seam. And that's on both sides and the drawstring you can move back and forth in there as well since we work directly over it that's the middle cluster right there in the middle that's unworked and then i also just wanted to show you guys the decreases what those look like on the hood so you can see both of my decreased rows here unless you're looking for it it is kind of hard to tell unless you know they know they are there so it blends in really well with the pattern you can see the space is just a little bit bigger but once you get the rows in you can't even tell so I just wanted to show you guys here that it's actually that it's more than that one decrease than what I showed you you can see every set of clusters and then the decrease all the way across on that row and then same for that second decreased row as well. So that is it for this pattern. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And I will see you guys in the next tutorial.